Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland uh, and this short video, another video in our series of videos dealing with group frequency distributions uh, is going to concentrate on the generation of a box and whisker plot okay uh, and just maybe just keep in mind that the video prior to this uh, showed us I suppose was a video that dealt with the actual definition of a box and whisker plot what was a box and whisker plot from what we defined to be a a five point uh, a five point uh, summary uh, perspective and we define a box and whisker plot to be a plot that represents five important points with respect to the distribution it represents the median it represents the first quartile, the third quartile, uh, what's known as the, the lower bound whisker position and the upper bound whisker position. And what we actually want to do now in this particular video is, uh, from a particular raw data set, okay, uh, let's just assume that this particular raw data set are responses uh, to a particular question that I asked 64 individuals, 64 students within the National College of Ireland. And the question was, how many Facebook friends had they got? And we had answers that ranged from, this person had 65 friends, this person had, had no friends, okay, on Facebook, uh, whereas this person down here had 175 friends. So we had responses between zero and 175. And now in a, also in a previous video, uh, I've, I've got a number of videos that show us how to construct a group frequency distribution once we have a raw data set and there's a number of steps that you need to go through that I'd recommend maybe going back to one of them videos if you don't know how to convert a, a raw data set into a group frequency distribution uh, but in for their for their purposes here in any the the associate group frequency distribution when we follow the process that I've previously defined looks something like this we've got one two three four five six the seven classes that we have uh, the seven classes, uh, the the class widths are 26, uh, so you can see each class width is of width 26, and in the previous video we defined how to calculate how many classes you should have for a particular sample size, and also what the width of the classes should be. But I suppose from a summary perspective, this group frequency distribution, uh, which is a summary of this particular raw data set, uh, would, would state that we have 25 observations in this particular data set between 0 and 26. I suppose that's inclusive of 0, but not including 26. So it's all the values between 0 and up to 26, but not including 26. We have 17 observations between 26 and 52, 13 between 52 and 78, 5 between 78 and 104, and I suppose finally down here we have two observations between 156 and 182. They're the frequencies, the number of observations in our data set that lie within each of our respective classes, which gives a total frequency count of 64, and that represents, that matches our sample size. In other words, we've accounted for all of the observations here. Now, what I'd like to do is we'd like to construct a box and whiskers plot. And what we had done previously is, uh, well, in the previous video, I've defined a box and whiskers plot to be a five point summary. Okay, The five important points that we need to calculate is we need to calculate the median of our data set. The median. Uh, we need to calculate the first, the first quartile. The first quartile. We need to calculate the third quartile. The third quartile. Uh, we need to calculate the lower bound, lower bound, bound whisker, okay, let's say, whisker, okay, uh, and we need to calculate the position of the upper bound, the upper bound, the upper bound uh, whisker, okay, for our plot, okay. So let's start this process off, so let's calculate the median first, okay, so this is going to just take a little bit of time uh, to actually do these particular calculations. Uh, the median, the median itself has a formula, uh, let's say m subscript e, it's equal to the lower bound of the median class, plus sigma f over 2, minus capital F of the median class minus 1, the cumulative frequency of the median class, the class before the median class, uh, small f of m, which is the actual frequency of the median class, times the class width, okay, the width of the median class. Uh, the key here is sigma f over 2, sigma f over 2, in our particular case here, sigma f over 2 is, well, sigma f is 64, so this is 64 divided by 2, which gives us 32. This is the key that we required this is going to allow us to identify all of the all of the relevant numbers that need to go into our median calculation. Okay, but I suppose what we need to do is we need to construct a cumulative frequency column. Okay, that's really important for us. Okay, so let's construct a cumulative frequency column uh, for our group frequency table. Okay, so it's a capital F column. So the question is, how many values are less than our upper bounds? How many values are less than twenty-six in our data set? Well, there's twenty-five. 
how many values are less than 52? Well, I suppose there's the, the 25 that are in the first class, okay? And there's the 17 that's in this class. So in total, there's 42 values less than 52. How many values are less than 78? Well, there's the 13 in this class, the 17 in the class before that, and the 25 in the class before that, which is the same as 13 plus 42, which gives us a value here of, of 55. How many values are less than 104? Well, there's all of these frequencies that are before that are all less than 104, okay, or represent observations that are less than 104. So there's a 5 plus the 55 gives us 60. How many are less than 130? Well, there's 62. How many are less than 